Welcome back to the Construct 2 tutorial to create a breakout clone. We're still doing finishing touches. The last video really wasn't the last one. It's taking me a little longer than I anticipated, so I want to make this a good game. All right, so last time uh, we started some startup elements. In particular, on any click, when the bullet speed is zero, that is the ball isn't moving yet, you click to start. Now, one other thing we have to do to make sure the ball isn't moving at the start, we need to set the gravity to zero. And then I'll just add another event here, which will take the ball's gravity, set gravity, to 3. Right. This ensures that it really isn't moving at the start, and this sets it up to start moving once you click. Alright, so we have restart, we have paused. We need some win conditions. I'll put those at the end here. Let's see. System. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare two things. First, I'm going to see how many bricks are there left on the screen. So that's brick count. If it's equal to zero, ha, ah, you win. Also, I'm going to compare the ball count. If the number of balls on the screen, let's see, back, I need to compare values again. Let's see, ball count. If the number of balls is on the screen, you lose. So in this case, see, brick count is zero. I'm going to spawn the congratulations message, but I'm going to spawn it in the position of the pause message. So let's see, I'm going to have this spawn another object. That object is going to be congratulations. I'll put that on the GUI layer. Let's see, add it down here as well, except I will edit this and change the object to text game over, alas. Um, I also want, where it said press P, I'd like that to spawn the message which says press R. Text press R. Oops. This way, text press R. Put that on the GUI there. Now one thing you might worry about is, well, is it possible to both win and lose? What if both these conditions are true? You destroy all the bricks, and then you lose your ball. Well, what we'll do here is add a couple more conditions. Um, add another condition. This will only work if, and again, compare two values. The first one is going to be, is there already a message on the screen? Oops. First value, count. So the number of these, which is around, if that's equal to zero. And also, add another condition, except this will be not text congratulations, but text game over. Okay, so if there are no bricks, and if you haven't already have one of these messages displaying, then that'll trigger this message. I'm going to copy these conditions and paste them down here as well. Now one thing you might worry about, and rightfully so, oh, there are messages sitting around right here. I'll have them destroy if they're outside the layout. See, behaviors, destroy outside layout. Because of the way the construct is set up, I actually do have to have them present at the start. But after they start, I can then destroy them. All right, so that should spawn those. Also, I only want to be able to pause if I haven't already won or lost. Let's see, what else am I need to do here for finishing touches? Oh, when you start the game, I don't want that paddle to be moving around. Or, sorry, when you pause the game, I don't want the paddle to move around. So where is the paddle update? I'm going to change this from every tick. I'm going to edit this. Compare two values. Whenever the time scale is not equal to zero. So in other words, whenever it's not paused, then I will, in fact, update this information. All right, let's play a quick game. I don't need to save it. All right, so there I am. I'll click to start. Hooray, and I get all sorts of power-ups. I'm not going to have time to play a complete game, so I'll just lose to show you what happens. Hmm, nothing happens. Well, I'll fix that in the next tutorial, and also add the rest of the power-ups. It's been fun. I'll see you one more time.